Good Sabbath, everyone. It is good to be back together again. Amen. Amen. Summer is a busy time. We have different places to go, and uh, we're just not able to uh, be here completely as a whole congregation with everybody's goings and comings with uh, senior camp and middlers camp and association and uh, all those different things. I'm so happy that we're all here today. A portion of today's message is an excerpt from a message by Pastor Melvin Newland. Um, have you ever heard about the day that God created fathers? Well, it goes like this. On the day that God created fathers, an angel of the Lord stood in the background and watched what God was doing. Lord, the angel asked, are you sure you know what you're doing? If children are so close to the ground, why are you making fathers so high up? After all, they will have to kneel down if they ever shoot marbles with their children. They'll have to lean way over to tuck them into bed at night. And they'll have to bend so far down to kiss them on the head. The Heavenly Father said, Don't worry. I know exactly what I'm doing. If I didn't make Father so high, what would children have to look up to? Then the Lord made the hands of a father. They were big and sinewy and awkward. Again, the angel asked, Lord, uh, have you really thought this through? Those fingers are so big and clumsy. How will they be able to handle the pins of a diaper or unbutton one of those little buttons? They'll never be able to take the rubber band of a ponytail or remove a splinter from a finger. God replied, relax, they'll be just fine. They're big enough to hold all the things that a young boy takes out of his pocket at the end of the day. And they're large enough to cup the face of a child. God continued on and made the legs of a father, long and bony and hairy and not very attractive. Then he made broad shoulders. The angel asked, Lord, do you realize what you've done? You've just made a father without a lap. How's he going to be able to hold a child close to him without that child slipping right through his legs? God again answered, Mothers need laps, but fathers need broad shoulders so they can pull a sled in the wintertime and balance a bicycle in the summertime and cradle the sleeping head of a child on the way home from church. Then, just as God was in the middle of creating two of the biggest feet you have ever seen, the angel said, it's not fair. Do you really believe that those two big feet are going to get up in the middle of the night and respond to a crying child? God answered, they'll work. You'll see. They're big enough to support a father who's pretending to be a horse while his child is riding to an imaginary castle. They're big enough to wear two shoes that will be a challenge for any child to fill. Then God gave the father a voice, strong and authoritative. He gave him eyes that could see everything and yet remain calm and in control. Last of all, God gave the father tears. He then turned to the angel and asked, Do you still doubt me? The angel said no more. You see, God gave fathers a purpose. God gave fathers a role to serve. And that role comes with responsibility. Today, as we celebrate, prepare to celebrate Father's Day tomorrow, let's consider today the responsibilities that fathers have. You know, I have a man that I've been working for, ministering into his life, and he was sharing with me this week that uh, his stepson, who has never known his father, came up to him and said, Sir, can I call you Daddy? And he said, uh, I said, of course you can. He said, but Shay, it rocked me to my core. 
because I realize the immense responsibility that comes with being that child's father. So let's consider today the responsibilities we have as fathers. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8, when you're there, you can say amen. amen. It says, if anyone does not provide for his family, especially those of his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than someone who does not believe in Christ. That's responsibility. If anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he is denied the faith and worse than an unbeliever. So what can we see out of this church that's one of the responsibilities of a father? It is to provide. We are to provide for our family, to make sure our children have a home and food to eat and clothing to wear. But scripture also teaches there must be a balance. You see, as men, sometimes we're so focused on providing things that we present an unbalanced picture to our children about life. And the result is we have a bunch of materialistic little monsters that we've created. We provide too many things for them. And as a result, there are a lot of children growing up who don't realize you have to work and earn and save, and wait before some of the good things in life become yours to use and enjoy. This is more common than not, and as a result, I believe we're creating a society of people who never appreciate hard work that has gone on before them to create the nation that they've inherited. And they're not willing to pay the price to keep this nation stable. You know, it was tough on me. The boys lost their bikes this Christmas. Right after Christmas, they left them out on the street. I told them not to, but they did. And we don't know if they were stolen or if someone thought they were being put out there to be taken away. But either way, they disappeared. As a father who wants to provide, it would have been easy for me to go and just buy them new bicycles. But as a father, we have a responsibility to teach them the value of things. To teach them the value of hard work. Of what things are worth. It was one of the most difficult things I've ever done to watch them work and save their chore money and do extra jobs for months. Until they finally saved up enough not to buy a new bike, but just enough to buy a used bike. But that is the call that we're given as fathers to provide guidance to our children and teach them a balanced view of materialistic things in this life. You see, God has always provided for His children, but He never provided too much. You see, with the children of Israel who were in the wilderness, God created them how much manna? Enough for the year? Enough for the week? One day gave them just enough to eat that day. Every morning, they would have to get up and go out and collect manna again. It was only on the sixth day that he gave them extra so they wouldn't have to work on the Sabbath. And oh, by the way, God didn't put it in the baskets. He made them go out and get it themselves. They had to work for it. So the message we as fathers need to hear loud and clear today is that yes, we are to provide for our family but to make sure that we do not provide too little or too much. Make sure that our children have all they need, but also make sure they appreciate those things and are willing to go out and work for them when their turn comes. We are also to provide spiritual leadership to our families. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, Paul writes, Fathers, do not exasperate your children, but instead bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. You see, this is another 
of our responsibilities in providing for our family, our children, we are to provide discipline and instruction to make sure that we are spiritual leaders in our home. Too many homes, too many families today suffer from lack of true spiritual leadership from the father in the home. Too many homes don't even have a father. And too many of those that do have fathers who have absconded their responsibility to provide not only financially and materially, but spiritually for their children, for their entire family. You see, if we're not spiritual leaders in our homes, then we're neglecting a very important responsibility that God has given us. How do we lead? Well, I believe that we lead by example. We let them see us conduct our own personal devotions. We let them hear us pray and cry out to God in earnest with sincere petitions not only for material things, but for the welfare of others, for the salvation of others. And most importantly, our children hear us pray and ask God through His Holy Spirit to change us into being all that God has called us to be. Instead of crashing in front of the TV or computer, we are called to spend time teaching them about the Lord, helping them memorize Scripture and put into practice godly principles we have taught them so that when they're faced with real-life situations, they can draw upon those things they have been taught and make wise decisions. Did you know, fathers, that you present the first image of God to your children? What do we call God? Father. So what is the first image of a father they get? It's you. What a tremendous responsibility we have to live a life that shows them the very character and nature of God as we yield ourselves to His Holy Spirit. Larry Crabb tells about watching his father pray when he was only four years old. He says, It was Sunday morning and about 50 people were gathered in a circle at our communion service. The elements, covered simply with a white cloth, were on a table in the middle. The arrangement was intentional. It spoke of Christ as the center of our thoughts. And then my dad stood up to pray. I was laying on the floor looking up at him, but even now the memory is clear. I thought to myself at four years old, Dad actually thinks he is talking to someone. And from what I can hear Dad saying, that someone means more to him than anyone else. You see, without even thinking about it, Larry Crabb's father modeled what his priorities were for his son. He walked with God at the communion table And his actions spoke to his son of walking and talking and claiming God as his very own. As fathers, we need to provide authority in the home. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a child, my dad had boundaries. There were lines you didn't cross. And if I did cross those lines, there was a very painful price to pay. There was a punishment to be endured. In fact, I even feared my dad when it came to crossing those lines. Yeah, I did. But only when I crossed over those lines or when I was considering crossing over those lines did I fear my dad. Did I love my dad? Sure I did. Even though he had his faults, I knew that in most of those boundaries he was trying to be fair and loving to me. He had set his boundaries, the few there were, because they were the right boundaries, and I knew in my heart he really wanted what was best for me. You see, as fathers, we are to provide an environment where children understand authority in the home, and thereby they appreciate the authority in the world as well. How many times my boys and I have discussed about people who end up in jail and what got them there. It was a lack of respect for authority. You see, if we don't stand up, fathers, and provide authority in the home, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of rebels in our house. 
And the older they get, the worse it's going to get. And there's plenty of evidence of that happening already. Unfortunately, instead of providing authority in the home, many homes are like this quote from the show Family Man. Well, the kids tell their mom what to do, and she tells me what to do, and if I want, I can tell the goldfish to do something. It's kind of funny, but it's really sad. Men, it ought not be so. We are to be the provider of authority in our home and teach our children to respect authority so that when they grow up, they will respect authority. Now, in addition to providing for our home, number two, as fathers, we protect. Fathers must protect their children, their family. Now, instinctively, almost all of us have those feelings of wanting to hold our families close and make sure that nothing ever harms them. We want to say to all that is evil and all that could hurt, you must not come through the door of my house. So I charge you today, fathers, protect your children. Protect them by making sure they are taught the right things. Make sure their minds are filled with wholesome truths. Protect them from all the evil and false doctrines that are out there. Protect them from the evil and filth that's on the TV and the internet. Fathers, if you're not using an internet filter, you might as well take them out to a whorehouse or a violent gang member and just leave them there for all they can easily find and be exposed to on the internet. Now, I know this from experience. One of my children nearly killed themselves because I didn't protect them from the evil elements on the internet. And they developed a self-destructive habit. I charge you, fathers, know where and with whom your children are playing. Get involved in their day and get them to share what has occurred that day so that you can intervene and protect them. Because, fathers, we are not only to provide for, but we are to protect our children. And finally, as fathers, we are to pray. Not just for our children, but we pray because, I don't know about you, fathers, but we're not really sure how to answer all their questions. We're not sure how to solve all their problems. And for me, I'm not even sure how to be a good father. So what is our solution, fathers? We pray. We pray that God will help us. That God will give us wisdom and strength and guidance. We pray that we'll be sensitive to what is going on in our children's lives and not be so wrapped up in our own life that we miss an opportunity to be Jesus in the lives of our children. We pray that we'll be loving and understanding, and authoritative, and all the things that a father needs to be. Because without God's help, I don't see any way that any of us can be the kind of fathers we need to be. As a father myself, I wonder how many days have come and gone that were monumental days in the lives of my children, and I never knew. I wonder how many things with my first three children that we were going to do but never got around to doing that might have changed their life and molded their personality a little different. You see, that was me with our older children. Many times I was too busy grabbing the brass ring and I missed opportunities, opportunities that I'll never get back. Opportunities as well to realize the terrible issues that some of them were dealing with, all without my knowledge. So when I pray now, I thank God more for those years with my children I thank Him for the sticky faces. I thank Him for the constant questions, the toys on the floor, too much noise, especially as I get older. Not enough privacy. But most of all, I thank Him for the words like I heard this morning when I got up. Good morning, Daddy. I love you. I thank God for all of that and much, much more. I pray for myself that I will be more attentive, that I will take more time with them, to be sure to listen to them. I pray that when I pray with them, that like Larry Crabb's father, they will see a relationship with God and what it should look like. 
This Father's Day, I pray that each of us fathers be fathers who provide, protect, and pray. Fathers who provide for their family's physical, material, emotional, and spiritual needs. Fathers who provide the spiritual authority figure our families need. Fathers who protect their children from undue influences and attacks from the enemy. And fathers who pray for their families as well as for themselves. That they would be the godly father that men we are called to be. May God bless and lead you in this endeavor to be the father you're called to be. Amen.